Baroness Randerson. I beg leave to ask questions standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, to the end of 2009, the latest year for which complete data are currently available, a cumulative total of 79,165 laboratory diagnoses of hepatitis C had been reported to the Health Protection Agency. The HPA advised that the number of laboratory diagnoses made will be higher than this because of under-reporting, but the number of undiagnosed individuals is not known. But the Health Protection Agency, um, my Lord, uh, does refer to um, a very much higher number, possibly 250,000 people being infected with hepatitis C. Uh, that is their estimate. There are estimates up to 450,000. I, I very much uh, welcome your detailed answer. But since 1997, the number of cases of hepatitis C reported each year has almost trebled. The majority are still undiagnosed. And I would ask, uh, indeed, that uh, in future, in particular in prisons, uh, that there could be some more systematic and proactive screening of, uh, young, of the prisoners in order to ensure that we diagnose more cases. My noble friend is absolutely right that there is um, a, a range of estimates on both the incidence and the prevalence of hepatitis C. Uh, and I, I, I could uh, spend some time explaining why that is, but partly it's to do with the long incubation period of hepatitis C where um, symptoms don't manifest themselves for many, many years. As regards prisons, my noble friend is, is quite right that this tends to be, prisons tend to be a repository of this condition. Um, I think the story there in recent years has been good. Provision of information for prisoners and prison staff uh, has, uh, has uh, increased uh, around hepatitis C and other bloodborne viruses. Increased access to hepatitis C testing for prisoners has also taken place. We have had improved access to treatment with hepatitis, th those prisoners with hepatitis C, um, and improved access to drug treatment generally, which is, of course, absolutely germane to this condition. Uh, so um, I believe that um, the focus is there, we just, but there is more to do. Can the Minister tell the House how many people and the patients infected with hepatitis C by contaminated NHS blood have since died in consequence. Um, my Lords, I'm sure that the Noble Lord will know that um, precise figures are not available for uh, that particular group. Um, but I hope he will also recognise that we have taken steps to improve the, um, the financial help available to these unfortunate victims of the uh, contaminated blood disaster of the 1970s and 80s. Would the Noble Earl the Minister agree uh, that under GMC rules on informed consent, it is not proper to take a sample of blood for another purpose and then to have that screened for the presence of hepatitis without the informed consent of the individual? Would he ever further agree that for research purposes, it is perfectly proper to screen large numbers of batches of blood taken for other purposes or for e epidemiological research, provided the results are anonymized. The Noble Lord is quite right that um, there is, generally speaking, no problem uh, about using uh, human tissue samples uh, for research purposes where uh, those samples are anonymized. In other circumstances, of course, the Act does demand uh, that the principle of consent uh, should apply. Could, could the Minister explain to us, obviously uh, there's no general screening program, but uh, we do appreciate the cases such as referred to uh, of the blood cases, the contaminated blood. But what would an ordinary person be looking for in order to submit themselves for screening? Because it must be advantageous to diagnose such conditions early rather than late. My noble friend is absolutely right that early diagnosis is always, well, uh, is always uh, a, a, a good thing, uh, both as in this condition as with many others. Um, the, we know um, 
who the risk groups are. And um, the important thing, therefore, is to target screening and testing uh, at those groups. Uh, predominantly, the, risk, the at-risk groups are injecting drug users or former injecting drug users. They account for over eight, well over 80 percent of cases of hepatitis C. Uh, and that is indeed uh, the, uh, the focus of our, our efforts in primary care, in community care, and uh, especially in prisons. Does the Noble Earl, the Minister, think there might be some ethical issues in mass screening of blood samples or without informing anonymous, anonymously screening the blood samples if there was a treatment available for the disease that was being screened? Um, in the case of hepatitis C, uh, there are, of course, treatments available recommended by uh, NICE, um, which, uh, if taken uh, early enough, can dramatically affect the, the, the course of uh, the disease. Um, I think uh, we're in danger of, of, of straying into um, legislative territory that perhaps, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, that is perhaps at the occasion for a, a wider debate as to how, if at all, we expand the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, scope of the Human Tissue Act so as to, uh, to, to reach uh, those, uh, those cases that I think the Noble Lord is referring to. My Lords. We all welcome the government's statement in January which increased support for those with hepatitis C. Could the Noble Lord the Minister please tell us what progress has been made to deliver the exception from means testing of the new payments, the provision of prepayment prescription certificates and which national charities are in receipt of the additional funding of £100,000 to, to support hepatitis C victims and their families? My Lords, the Caxton Foundation has been established to uh, address the, um, the group of uh, hepatitis C victims uh, identified in uh, the government's statement of earlier this year, those victims of uh, the contaminated blood disaster who went on to develop hepatitis C. Uh, that foundation um, will, I understand, begin making payments uh, later this year, and that uh, will also include um, payments to those who are eligible for uh, the uh, uh, free prescription service that she referred to.